Hi, I'm Veronica Wasek with 5-Minute Bookkeeping. And in previous videos, I have been talking about the diagnostic review process that I use to review my clients' books and to assess what's wrong with them, to assess pricing for cleanup, and to generally just get an idea of the extent of any cleanup or any catch-up or anything that needs to be done to get the, the, the books cleaned up and caught up. So today I thought I would show you and demonstrate for you the process that I go through to diagnose the profit and loss uh, and in particular the income section of the profit and loss report. So I'll go ahead and get started. So I am in the profit and loss report for Modern Global. This is a sample company. And I'm looking at the period from January through December of 2021. So in this case, I would be reviewing the books for the full year. And I am going to start uh, and focusing on the income section, as I said. And what I do first is to take a look and just get an idea of what's going on uh, just from a big picture of does anything stand out to me that looks unusual or unexpected um, that's based on what I know about my client and I just work my way down so we have consulting markup income service uncategorized income we have some uh, design services job materials labor and then total income First thing that I'll turn my attention to is service. And usually when we see clients that haven't necessarily uh, set up their products and services list correctly, we'll start seeing uh, lines like service or sales of product income. And that is a sign that they haven't mapped their items in the products and services list correctly. So here I would then drill down so click on the amount and pull up one of these invoices and just to get a feel for what's going into that uh, line item. So I'll click on that invoice and I see that there that this service went into tree removal service. Okay, so I would then question whether this should be categorized as tree removal or perhaps a different kind of service. Um, so I would have that conversation with my client and to help them uh, determine whether their, um, their sources of income are properly categorized and being shown in the profit and loss report. I'll go back to the report. The next item to focus on is uncategorized income. And this is definitely one that we have on our um, diagnostic checklist that we use at my company, VM Wasek for diagnosing whether any income is miscategorized. And definitely if income is not categorized, then we have an issue. So again, I will click on the amount. And here I can see actually that income was uh, recorded directly through deposits. So what this tells me is that the income was directly recorded as a deposit through the bank feeds. And usually we see this when clients are adding transactions without reviewing them. So rather than posting a customer payment against an open invoice, the client just recorded this as a deposit. So here we have to then um, identify the invoices that these uh, deposits pertain to and also look for any customer payments that may have been entered in order to properly record these. Back to the profit and loss. We have design services. Um, don't see anything unusual. Uh, with that but then we have job materials and you can see that all of these amounts are negative amounts so let's go ahead and click on one of these oh yes so we see that some bills so these are vendor bills that were incorrectly entered to income accounts so let's go ahead and click on one right so they're using uh, items from the products and services list which would then indicate that this um, these items are not set up correctly. So again, I would need to work with the client to make sure that their products and services lists are set up correctly and pointing to the right accounts. In this case, 
if a client is using an item from the products and services list and they're wanting to use it for expenses at, such as they did here, then you would need to set up a double-sided item in the products and services list. Go back to the profit and loss. So all of these, as you can see, are probably the same issue. So um, those would need to be uh, cleaned up. Okay, so then we have uh, labor, we have installation, and we have maintenance and repairs. So these don't look out of place, but one of the things that I also check is to see whether any income was recorded as deposits instead of um, invoice payments. So let's go ahead and click on this large amount. And I will typically sort by transaction type. Okay, so now you can see that all the transactions are sorted by transaction type. So we have deposits and then we have invoices. Now typically for a client who is invoicing customers, we should then see invoices in the um, income account and not deposits. So let's go ahead and click on one of these. Boy, and they have a lot of items in undeposited funds. So that's already telling me there's a problem. <laughs> okay, so here is the deposit that was entered and it was recorded directly to consulting. This is a sign of the client adding um, amounts from the bank feeds window directly as a deposit instead of matching them to any open invoices or customer payments. And another telltale sign that this is happening is that we have lots and lots of old undeposited funds. So what this is doing is the client is bypassing the invoices and customer payments, therefore bypassing what's in undeposited funds and recording these customer payments directly to deposit. So this will need to be researched and we'll need to then identify which invoices and payments this amount pertains to and then actually post it correctly by choosing the correct invoices in undeposited funds. Back to the profit and loss. So we can also check another account here for installation. Check for the same thing and, and you would want to check this for all of your, your income accounts and look for any income that was recorded as deposit. So again, we'll sort by transaction type. And it looks like everything was recorded either as an in invoice or in this case, a sales receipt. So those would be fine. So we're good here. That concludes my diagnostic review of the income section of the profit and loss report. I'll continue to do more videos showing you how I diagnose other sections of the profit and loss report, as well as the balance sheet and other reports. If you find this content helpful, then like this video, leave a comment, share the video, and subscribe to my channel so you can get all of the latest videos. And also check out the description box below for free resources for bookkeepers and accountants, as well as the link to join my online community on Facebook. Bye.